Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use your Canon EOS R as a live streaming camera. I'm going to connect it to my MacBook Pro and we're going to use only the USB-C Type 3 cable that actually comes with the camera. Now, if you don't have one of these cables handy, if you've misplaced it or you didn't get it in the box for some reason, I'll leave a link to where you can purchase one in the description box below. In addition to that, I'm gonna show you how to connect your Canon EOS R to a Windows computer and perform the same function, allowing you to live stream on either a Mac or Windows PC. The benefit of the solution I'm showing you today is that you don't need to purchase expensive HDMI capture cards such as the Elgato 4K streaming capture card. Now these are great solutions by the way for those of you wanting the absolute best quality in your stream because you can get up to 4K resolution streams at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 60 frames per second and also 720p. The method I'm showing you today is limited to a 1280 by 720p resolution at 30 frames per second which is going to be fine for most of you and certainly given that you're doing this for free is a great approach and it saves you purchasing one of those external capture cards. And the other advantage, of course, when you're using your Canon EOS R is the ability to couple it with your favorite prime lens, open up the aperture and get that soft background look, which is very distinctive as opposed to the very flat look that you get when you're using a webcam that's built into your computer. So it's gonna give you a very unique look and it can be done very easily using the method I'm about to show you. Let's go ahead and check it out. The first step in the process is to connect the Canon EOS R to the computer using the supplied USB-C Type 3 cable. If you have misplaced it or if you need a cable with a longer length, I'll leave a link to where you can purchase a new cable in the description box below. Now go ahead and turn on your camera and put it into video mode. To do that, click on the mode and info button simultaneously. Now that your Canon EOS R is in video mode and connected to the computer, we're ready to set up the software. For Mac users, you'll need three pieces of software to get this to work. The first is Camera Live, the second is Cam Twist. These are both utility apps and I'll leave a link in the description box below to where you can download these for free. And finally, the streaming software itself, OBS, Open Broadcast Software, which is available for Mac OS 10.13 onwards, Windows and Linux, and OBS lets you create live streams for most popular streaming platforms, such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Mixer. So go ahead and download all three software titles, and now let's begin with a demonstration. The first step is to launch Camera Live, provided you have your EOS R connected to your computer and in video mode. You should see that the EOS R comes up in the list of connected cameras. If it doesn't do it at first, try disconnecting the EOS R from the USB port reconnecting it again, turning it on and off until you see it appears in the list of connected cameras. Next, open up Cam Twist. In the first column, select Siphon as your video source. Then in the right-hand column, select Camera Live as your Siphon server. Then click on the Preferences and make sure you have ticked Enable the Siphon server. That's all we need to do to set up the ESR as a live streaming camera. Now let's test it out using OBS. Click on the plus icon in the sources box and select video capture device. Then in the window that opens up under the device dropdown, select Cam Twist. And now you should see a preview of the EOS R in the preview window. You could also select to add a Siphon client. Then from the source list, select Camera Live EOS R. However, I have had better results when using the first option. If you're using Skype, go to the audio video settings and select Cam Twist. If you're using Zoom, you'll get the option to select Cam Twist as your camera on previous versions, but unfortunately the latest version of Zoom has disabled the use of virtual cameras, so it will no longer work. You could go back to a previous version of Zoom. You can go to their website and download previous versions, or you could do a screen capture recording from within Zoom using the OBS preview window, but that isn't really ideal. When it comes to audio, whether you select this method or you stream via HDMI, it doesn't usually bring in the audio source from your camera. So you'll just be using the audio of your computer. For better results, you should consider adding an external audio source, either a USB microphone, or you can do as I have done and connect something like a Pro XLR microphone using an audio interface 
that is connected to your computer via USB. Then depending on which streaming software you're using, select that audio source as your audio input. Now, for those of you using a Windows computer, you can't get Camera Live or Cam Twist. And up until recently, this method wasn't possible. But thanks to a new piece of software currently in beta development by Canon, you can now do a similar thing. It's called the EOS Webcam Utility, and you can download it from the Canon US website today. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Once you install the Webcam Utility, it operates behind the scenes, so there's no user interface required. Simply click on the streaming software of choice. In my example, I'm going to be using OBS once more. In the source section, I'll click the plus button to add a video capture device and I'll select the EOS webcam utility beta. If you find this isn't working the first time you try it, it probably has something to do with a conflict with the EOS utility app if you have that installed. I actually spent hours trying to work this one out. What actually happens is when you first connect your Canon EOS R camera to the PC computer, the EOS utility fires up. That ends up taking command of the camera input and it fails to work on your streaming software. So you have to make sure that you close the EOS utility app. I tried to close it using the cross icon in the top right hand corner of the EOS utility software. It didn't actually work. So what I did, I clicked on the triangular icon on the bottom tray bar and then quit the EOS utility from this section. And then when I returned to the OBS software, once again, I created a video capture device in the source section. And this time I actually got the live video to show up out of the Canon EOS R. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get it to work with Skype during this current testing. So I imagine over the coming months as updates come out, it'll become more useful. And further to this, I would say that once out of beta, Canon will move on to produce a version for Apple as well. So eventually the use of Camera Live and Cam Twist won't be needed on the Apple platform anymore. And once I hear more about that, I'll be sure to produce a follow-up video on the channel. On a final note, I wanted to bring up some hardware options for live streaming. First of all, the battery life of your EOS will be a limiting factor. I usually get around 30 to 45 minutes before it packs in. So having to charge batteries during a stream is gonna be massively inconvenient. So you could consider purchasing an LP E6 battery wall charger. Also, if you're using a longer lens, such as an 85 millimeter or 135 portrait lens, for example, you may want to consider a longer USB cable. If your Mac or PC doesn't have a USB-C Type 3 port, you can get a USB-C Type 3 to USB 2 cable instead. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, you know what to do. Hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. And if there are any questions whatsoever about what I've covered today, feel free to put those questions in the comments box below and I'll attempt to get back to you as soon as possible. There's gonna be a number of different factors that will determine your success when setting up this solution, the hardware you're using, the versions of software, etc. So I will certainly try and help out where I can. I mightn't have the answer for everybody, but certainly from my experience, I've been able to get this to work and uh, I'll be able to help you out if you have a similar setup. So feel free to put those questions in the comments box below. See you on the next one. Bye for now.